Our passage for this morning can be, is taken from Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 2 to the end of chapter 6. But because of time constraint, we will be only reading in the entire chapter 5. She, I slept, my, but my heart was awake. Listen, my beloved is knocking. Open to me, my sisters, my darling, my dove, my flawless one. My head is stretched with you, my hair with the dampness of the night. I have taken off my robe. Must I put it on again? I have washed my feet. Must I soil them again? My beloved thrust his hand to the latch opening. My heart began to pound for him. I rose to open my beloved, and my hands drip with mirror, my fingers with flowing mirror on the handles of the bolt. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved has left. He was gone. My heart sank at his departure. I looked for him, but I did not find him. I called him, but he did not answer. The watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. They beat me, they bruised me, they took away my clock. Those watchmen of the walls. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, if you find my beloved, what will you tell him? Tell him I am faint with love. Friends, how is your beloved better than others, most beautiful of women? How is your beloved better than others than you charge us? She, my beloved is radiant and ruddy, outstanding among ten thousands. He said it's pure as gold, his air is wavy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves by the water streams, washed in milk, mounted like jewels. His cheek like beds of spices, yielding perfume. His lips are like lilies dripping with mirror. His arms are rod of gold set with topaz. His body is like polished ivory, decorated with lapis lazuli. His legs are pillars of marble set on base, bases of pure gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice at its cedar. His mouth is sweetness itself. He is altogether lo lovely. This is my beloved. This is my friend, daughters of Jerusalem. Now we give the time to Pastor Billy Arkayan, the art of conflict. Can you hear my voice? It's clear? Okay. We've been going through a very important series. I wish I had learned all about this when I was in college. I was completely shocked when I entered college. So many things I did not know and so many things I pick up from peers and from what I saw. So we are lucky because right now we have a chance to learn about Song of Songs and the topic is how to fight well or the art of conflict. <clears throat> we started looking at how to attract. Then we proceed to how to date, leading us to courtship with the intention of marrying her and be intimate with her for life. This morning we are going to learn how to fight. I believe no one here can say from the day I got married until today, my spouse and I never have fought. Walang ganyan, okay? Walang ganyan. The truth is we inevitable, um, the truth is we, we are all wise. We are all wise enough to know that conflict would be an inevitable part of our marriage relationship. Lahat ang couple nag-aaway. 
Okay? Just a subject we've been talking about, attraction, dating, courtship, intimacy. These are subjects that if threatened, if not applied, will lead to sparks in our marriage relationship. While we were prepared intellectually, alam natin na once we got married, may away, okay? We were unprepared emotionally, okay? We don't know that conflict could be so draining and so painful. If not properly dealt with or immediately dealt with, conflict could become a disaster waiting to explode. It could hurt not just ourselves, but many other people around us. Our only consolation in this life is that we are never alone. All God's children have conflict. If there's no conflict, then you're either perfect or without sin, or boring and non-communicative, or one is dominant and the other is extremely passive. This morning, let us examine the biblical way to fight. Six steps to resolving conflict. I encourage you to listen seriously, reverently, asking God to quiet down our hearts, open up our eyes and mind to see our own imperfections first, give us the faith to trust what His Word has to teach us regarding one of the robbers of intimacy, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, give us a teachable heart this morning. Help us to drown all the worldly voices around us that may distract us from worshiping you and from hearing you through the message. Enable us to resolve, to strive earnestly to be humble, forgiving and loving when facing conflicts. Enable us to use our conflicts as opportunity to glorify God, serve other people, and grow to be like Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. We have been going through a very important series, Song of Solomon, is eight chapters long and conflicts get two chapters, okay? That's 25% of the book. Parang prophecy, no? Na yung buhay mo, 25% is solving conflicts. Good couples fight clean while bad couples fight dirty. Good couples press to a resolution while bad couples press for a victory. Kyong kyong ba? Yeah, okay. When a good couples fight, they expose their character. When bad couples fight, they expose their immaturity. Let me give you one great verse regarding marriage, okay? Proverbs 14, verse 4. Sabi dun, pakibasa, When no oxen are... That means... If you have no oxen in your barn, you will have clean manger. Malinis. Mabango. Okay? But you also don't have work. Don't get any work done. On the other hand, if you want to put foods on the table, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to plant. And to plant, you're going to have to plow. To plow, you're going to have oxen. And to have oxen, you will definitely have a messy, stinky manger. In other words, you cannot have everything the way you always like it. Hindi pwede. No oxen means clean barn, but no work. If there's no work, then you have smelly barn. Okay? I mean, if there's work, then you have smelly barn. The same is also true in marriage. If you want the joy of marriage, you are going to have some conflict. Okay? Listen, you're going to have some conflict. That is very different from you're going to go and look for some conflict. Okay. Let me give you the three great stages in marriage. First stage is honeymoon. That simply means sweet month. And then you go to what is called dissolution stage. Disillusionment stage. You thought you married Tom Cruise. You got home Homer Simpson instead. <laughs> That's disillusionment, okay? Third stage is you move from disillusionment into what we call commitment stage, okay? This stage is where you discover your mate holistically, okay? Not 
H-O-L-Y, holistically, but W-H-O-L-E, holistically. You discover his or her strong points, weak points, flaws, warts, lunal, lahat all, okay? And you commit yourself to loving them no matter what, loving them in a biblical manner. Let's read chapter 5, verse 2. Sabi ng Shulamite woman, I slept but my heart was awake. Listen, my beloved is knocking. Open to me, my sister, my darling, my dove, my flawless one. Remember, in those days, they slept in separate room. Okay? Ngayon, pag separate room, nag-aaway. Dati, from the very beginning, separate room, okay? Lalo na kapag king ka. King, okay? Your wife doesn't sleep with you, may separate room siya. And the guy is King Solomon. Why do you think the guy is knocking? This guy wants intimacy with his wife. Sabi sa end of verse 2, My head is drenched with dew, my hair with the dampness of the night. The guy has been out working. He came home at night. He longs for intimacy with his wife. Pagod eh. Gusto niya, relax, relax. Okay? Gusto niya, lumapit sa asawa niya. Verse 2 also gives us the idea that that time when she, he was knocking, it was a restless night for the Shulamite girl. She was awake, tossing and turning. Perhaps she was having some difficulty adjusting to married life. Perhaps she was longing for her parents, okay? She missed her parents. Or perhaps something is bothering her, okay? Let's stop here. In our previous series, previous messages, we said that in dating, the guy's character, integrity, respect, and appreciation causes the Shulamite girl to quickly fall in love with him. Sabi nga niya, how I wish his left hand is under my head, his right hand embraces me. Okay. She was nearly tempted, okay, sobrang gentleman, sobrang sweet, appreciative, encouraged this guy, okay, she was so tempted to give herself to him, but Solomon said, don't awaken love until it so desires. Solomon says, let's control ourselves, okay. It's not yet the right time. Now, in courtship, when we go to courtship, he committed, Solomon committed to love her no matter what and to catch those little foxes that can ruin their relationship. Sabi ni Solomon, hindi lang kita mahal, I promise I will not allow anything to hinder or destroy our relationship. Because of that, she called him a young stag, wild and strong. And she called her breast the heels of bitter. Metaphor. Sabi niya, how I wish, sabi ni Shalomite girl, how I wish we are one already so you can be a young stag feeding on my heels of bitter. I believe at this point, if Solomon had pressed her physically, okay, next stage ng courtship is what? Marriage, di ba? Next step ng dating, courtship. Courtship is serious, okay? Next step ng courtship is marriage, okay? In courtship, the girl was ready. I believe if Solomon had processed her physically, she would give in and sleep with him. But again, being a true gentleman, sabi ni Solomon, let's control our passion again and said, do not awaken love until it so desires. Let's wait for the marriage time again. Okay? Last week, on their honeymoon night, kinasal na sila, okay? Wedding day, on their honeymoon night, we saw their passion and their becoming one intimately. Sabi natin, she is very responsive and she enjoyed him all night. So, question. Okay, we go to chapter 5 now. Question. Now that they had sealed their love, now that they are married, what do you think the Shulamite woman will do when he came home, knocking at the door, desiring to have intimacy with her wife again in chapter 5? Hindi na pwedeng, do not awaken love until it's all desires. Kasal na tayo eh. 
So when, when he knocks at the door, my sister, my dove opened the door. What do you think the Shilomite woman will say? Come here. Ha, ba? You thought she would say, come in, my young stag. Okay, she did not. Verse 3 says, I have taken off my robe. Must I put it on again? I have washed my feet. Must I sold them again? Modern time, nakarolas na ako. Okay, tatagnan ko ba? Masakit, okay? In Hebrew, that means I have a headache. Sorry, sakit ulo ko. Okay. That means I don't care how hard you have worked. I don't care what you need. I'm not going out of bed. I'm more important than you. It's obvious UCC Church. We are seeing here the couple's first conflict. Unang awa ito after honeymoon. She never said no to him before. In fact, she wanted to give herself to, to him, okay? And now all of a sudden, she declines him. There's not a word of endearment in verse 3. Tawag niya before, young stag, my love, my prince, okay? Ngayon, wala. They must be fighting. They have disagreement and they don't see eye to eye. Question, what would you do if you were the king? Tandaan mo, ang asawa is King Solomon. You're the king, okay? I gave you everything, position. Then when I come see you, ayaw mo. Nakakalimot ka yata. Tandaan mo, inampon kita, binihisan kita. Dahil sa akin, nandyan ka sa iyong kinalalag. Yung mga telenovela, ganyan, di ba? Kinalalag yan. Tapos ito ang iganti mo sa akin. Okay. Is that what Solomon said? No. You ungrateful woman? Is that what Solomon said? No. Listen carefully. What is the first thing you do when you have conflict? When your mate hurts you, step number one, you do not react. Watch this, verse 4. My beloved thrust his hand through the latch. Dato yung mga pinto, may mga opening yan eh. Pinapasok, okay? Through, through the latch opening. Notice, si Solomon did not go in. He does not press it. Akin tong bahay ito, bakit hindi po yung pumasok? Umalis ka. Wala, okay? Quiet. She, he just gently lets in her, his hand, okay? He merely slides his hand in through the opening and found it locked. Tapos, what did he do? Umalis siya. Okay? Walang double katok. Walang pilit-pilit, okay? Nakalock, ayaw kapasok. Ipapasok, okay, umalis na. Verse 5, the Shilomite woman, then I arose, okay, to open for my hus, for my beloved. Siguro, na, naisip niya, Mali eh. Bahay niya to. Okay? Queen lang ako. Okay? He worked very hard for me. Mali, okay? She opened the door. Opened for me. And my hands, while opening the lock, my hands drip with myrrh, my fingers with flowing myrrh when I touch the handles of the bolt. Okay? Yan pala, si Solomon put his hands inside the latch. Nakita na lock, he put myrrh all over the handle. Okay. He put myrrh on the door handle and quickly leave, quietly leave. I disagree with some commentaries saying, Solomon is here provoking her, getting even with her. Hindi yan getting, getting even, ganyan. <laughs> Di ba? That's getting even. You're putting myrrh, mahal yung myrrh. Di ba? Yung, yung get even. Di ba? Oh. Hindi. Pabango yan eh. That's not revenge. If he wanted revenge, he would have do, done that. No, okay. Back then, myrrh is so expensive. In Hebrew culture, putting myrrh on the handle means I love you. I wish the best for you. I wish you touch it and you smell so good. No? You do not react what your mate did. Just because she did it, does not mean you have to do it. Apostle Paul puts like this, okay? Sabi ni Apostle Paul, never take your own revenge, beloved. Sa 2 Thessalonians, okay? 
he puts it like this, never pay back evil for evil, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Listen, when you are hurt, a part of you naturally want to reciprocate in anger. Natural yan. Okay? Gusto mong gumanti. Initially, you don't feel wrong. You feel right. Tama to. You feel holy. You feel justified. You feel that you have done your part in getting rid of the problem. Dapat malaman niya, mali siya. Ina, kinokontrol niya ako. Sobra-sobra na yung, yung submission ko, ganyan pa siya. Okay? You, you, you want control. You want to get even. But the fact is, when you do that, you have taken a prerogative that belongs only to God. Sabi ng Diyos, vengeance is mine. Okay? When people react and take matters into their own hands, they either react what? React hot or react cold. Dalawa lang. Okay? You react hot or react cold. A hot reaction means that you get even and return in kind. Okay? What you do to me, I'll do to you. Sinampal mo ko, sasampalin din kita. Mm, kaya pa ganyan. Okay? Uh. That's not a solution because they will get even again and then you get even or even escalate the problem and the vicious cycle will not stop. No? Gantian lang. Okay? Gantian. A cold reaction is passive-aggressive. Bakit passive-aggressive? Yes, you don't have outward conflicts. Walang sigawan. Okay? Walang sagutan. You don't argue. You don't burst into anger. But that's because the other party stopped communicating. Okay? Ninadaktak mo na. Tingin lang. Or umalis, okay? Or if he ever talks at all, it's surface talk only. Opo, sige. Okay. Oh, okay. The tension in the home is still there. Everybody had to walk on eggshells because mom and dad were not getting along. Alam mo may problema. Have you experienced that? Yung magulang mo, alam mo, nag-aaway. So, maingat kasi kundi may sisigaw, okay? Dahil away sila lahat damay. And that's just as bad, if not worse, no? Singles, let me ask you a very penetrating question. Are you this kind of person? Do you solve conflicts through non-verbal communication? Huh? Do you blow up? Do you stomp out of the room? Naglayas na lang? Do you put cold shoulder or freeze everybody out of freeze everybody out or you pout? If yes, then I can tell you that you are miserable to live with. Kasi hindi tama yung react hot or react cold. Husbands, listen to me. You hurt your wife, you yell at her, and you have sent shrapnel into her soul. You hurt her with words. Tanga mo kasi. It's going to leave a deep scar. Bobo mo eh. You're going to leave a scar. She's not going to let you in quite easily. What do you do when you have conflict? Okay, step number one. You do not react, okay? You don't have to respond the same way your mate responds. Step number two, you respond to God. What do I mean you respond to God, okay? Solomon, nagkasala siya, binastos ka niya. She wronged you. She disrespected you. Why did you put myrrh, mahal-mahalang myrrh, put myrrh on the handles of the boat? The answer is, because my standard of conduct is not my wife, it is God. Okay? And God said, love your wife. And that's what I'm going to do, no matter what she does. This is the quality that was seen in Jesus Christ. I will not react exactly the same way she reacted. I will react the way God wants me to react to her. Somebody, Peter, when they hurled insults at Jesus Christ, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Jesus said, Father, 
forgive them. So Solomon was responding the way God would have. Okay? He blessed her or loved her even when he was rejected that night. Brothers and sisters, okay, if you can control your anger, control your anger, if you can maintain your composure, it's called magnanimity. Magnanimous, magnanimity. And the negative quality of magnanimity is called meanness. Kabaliktad, you're so mean. That's what the word mean means. Everybody is doing it. Okay? But you are not... Not like everybody because you responded to God. You are not like everybody because you're a believer. You're saved to be different. First Peter 3, 7, 9 says, Husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Meaning, you need to understand her. Understand that your role is to honor and love your wife. Don't be dumb. Treat her with respect as the weaker partner. Weaker here does that mean lesser. Baba. Okay. It means as a weaker vessel like porcelain, crystal, like China. Baba sagin. Okay. You handle her delicately. If you don't use the standard God has set up, your marriage will never become what God intended to be. No? Question. Pastor, kung ganon, if I don't react, if I don't get revenge, I treat everybody the way God wants me to treat them, lucky ako. For life, happy ako, di ba? What happens when I'm wrong? Who is going to help me if I don't stand up for myself, go down to verse 6, 7, okay? I open for my beloved. So, look. So, she went out. Okay, she went out. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had left. He was gone. My heart sank at his departure. I looked for him, but did not find him. I called him, but he did not answer. The watchman found me as they made the rounds in the city. They beat me. They bruised me. They took away my cloak. Tandaan mo, this is a song and the lyrics are in poetry. Okay? The lyrics are in poetry. Let's compare what we just read to chapter 3, previous chapter starting verse 2. I will get up now and go about the city through its streets and squares, I will search for the one my heart loves. So I looked for him, but did not find him. The, watch, the watchman found me as they made their rounds in the city. Have you seen the one my, love, my heart loves? Scarcely had I passed them when I found the one my heart loves. In chapter 3, nakita niya. In chapter 4, in chapter 5, hindi niya nakita. Tapos pinalo pa siya ng mga watchmen. Okay? They beat him, they bruised him. The lyrics is poetry. I believe that the watchman stands for God. No? In chapter 3, when she was in fellowship with God, things tended to flow her way. She found her husband. The watchman helped her. But in chapter 5, when she had acted in selfishness and barred her husband from entering, the watchman beat her, bruised her, they took her away. Like I said, Song of Songs is a song, but the lyrics are poetry, okay? Watchman is a metaphor for the Lord. It pictures the Lord disciplining her, okay? Disciplining her because she was acting selfishly, barring her husband from her room. So to answer your question, what happens when I'm wrong? Who's going to help me out if I don't stand for myself? If you let God be God... If you don't take matters into your own hand, the Lord will be your vindicator. He will take up your case. Let him correct you and perfect you. Know. First principle when people hurt you, don't react. 
Second principle, respond to God. You keep your focus on God. You keep your standard, okay, based on the word of God. Respond the way God would have responded when being rejected, okay? Step number three, let God change them, okay? Let God change them. Men, you are to love your wife. Let God change her. Ladies, you are to respect your husband. Let God change him. Do you know that in the entire Bible, there's no command given in the Bible to sanctify your spouse or your wife in the sense of changing her? We are to teach her, okay, love them, okay, care for her, but I don't have to play the Holy Spirit to her. I am to appreciate her, encourage her, pray for her, lead her. I don't have to change her. Did you know that whenever you try to change your mate, you go down the path of manipulation? I will do these things if you will do that. Okay. Going on, going on, going on. That's not ministry. That's manipulation. Only God is all wise. Only God is in full control. That means because we are not God, things never turn out quite the way we plan when we take matters into our own hands. It will backfire. Once there was a couple fighting, nagawa sila. Before work, the wife asked the husband, "Oi, paki zip yung damit ko, zip my dress, di ko maabot." To get even, the husband zip it harshly, zip, 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 zip. Okay, making her mad. That afternoon, she comes home, notice her husband was underneath the car, his legs are sticking out, so he reached down and zip his zipper pants, zip, 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 zip. Okay. And then storm into the house, okay? To her surprise, her husband was standing in the kitchen. She asked him, Who was that? Under the car, okay? Oh, our neighbor came over to help. <laughs> so they, they both went out and found him unconscious under the car bucket. When she reached down to unzip, he sat up, knocking himself on the car. No? <laughs> hmm. Moral lesson is, when we try to change our mate, it does not work out always the way we want it. No? When I counsel married couple, okay, the question I often get from them is, my spouse is like this, so selfish. Okay, sigaw na sigaw. What should I do? I ask them, what are your options? Can you leave your spouse? Some of them, no, no. The Bible says not to do that. Okay. Can we kill your spouse? And you see them, uh, uh, <laughs> they're contemplating whether they put it in. So they go, no, you cannot kill your spouse. Do not react. Respond to God in magnanimity, okay? Magna magnanimity, okay? And you let God change them. Step number four, when you're, when you're hurt by your spouse, <clears throat> control your attitude, no? <clears throat> control your attitude. The real and biblical solution to conflict involves assuming personal responsibility for the error rather than focusing on the other's error. No? Assume first your personal responsibility dun sa error. Maybe you have a part to play. Maybe, maybe may role ka, insensitive ka. Kaya he burst into anger. Okay? Before you Focus on his shortcoming. Don't forget that when we stand before God one day, he is not going to ask how our mate treated us. He will hold us accountable for how faithful we were in our behavior. So by that time, you can tell God, alam mo yung asawa ko, hindi nakikinig, puro TV. That was sabi ng Diyos. So what have you done to him? How did you react? Did you react godly? 
There's an important question in verse 9. No? <clears throat> in verse 9, the friends ask him, How is your beloved better than others? Okay. How is your beloved? Hinahanap ang beloved mo, di ba? How is he better than others? Why should we go look for him? Why should we help you look for him? How good is he? That question is designed to lead the Shulamite girl to focus on her husband's many good points. Siguro nakalimutan niya eh. He was the king. He pursued you. Diba? He promised to love you no matter what. He works hard. And then, ayaw mo papasukin? Nakalimutan niya lahat ng good things that he did. No? The question was designed to lead her to focus on her husband's many good points. The thing is this, when we get into conflict, all our human nature wants is to focus on the other's bad qualities. Kasi naharta tayo eh. Verse 10 says, My beloved is radiant and ruddy, outstanding among ten thousands. Verse 11 says, His head is pure as gold, meaning he is great and a pure leader. His hair is wavy and black, meaning he is young and strong. Verse 12, his eyes are like doves by the water streams washed in milk, meaning whenever he looks at me, it's a blessing, like water and milk is a blessing in the desert. He looks at you with so much gentleness, you will not be afraid. Hindi yun, ko ginle ginle, oh. Oh. Hindi. Pag nakatingin sa iyo, alam mo mahal ka niya. Okay. Hindi nakakatakot. His eyes are mounted like jewels, meaning his eyes don't don't narrow or widen with anger. They're consistent. They don't give you a nasty look. Verse 13, his cheeks are like beds of space yielding perfume, meaning she wants to draw close to you. Bangomo. His lips are like lilies dripping with myrrh, meaning you love to listen to his words because they're very assuring, full of forgiveness, tenderness, full of apologies and love. Verse 14, his arms are rods of gold set with topaz, meaning he never touches her violently. Huh? He never beat her. He got the right and gentle touch. Verse 15, his legs are pillars of marble, meaning he's strong, steadfast, immovable. Verse 16, his mouth is sweetness itself, meaning she wants to kiss him. Question, is it because he is some hunk of a man, that's why he wants to kiss him? No. It's because his eyes, his cheeks, his arms, his legs, his body, all represent tenderness, love, and kindness. That's why he wants to kiss him. Use his church. Isn't it that when we focus on others' bad qualities, before long we cannot think of one good quality they have? Kasi nakafocus tayo sa lahat ng masama niya. We can't see their good parts, no? That's why it's very important to control your attitude. It's important to have a positive concept of those who hurt you. Don't judge them immediately, okay? Step number five, when others hurt you, what you should do is communicate, talk, okay? Chapter six, verses one to three, pakibasa. As I said, when the Shulamite rejected Solomon, he did not press it. Instead, he puts myrrh to indicate that he will follow the standard of God and commit to love her no matter what. Love, I put myrrh. Para alam mo, hindi ako galit. Mahal pa rin kita. I leave. Kasi ayaw mo ako makita eh. Okay? I don't like to press it. Okay? I just leave. When she went out looking for him, 
the friends asked her out of concern, Where has your beloved gone? Saan siya napunta? Ba't may nahanap? Verse 2 says, My beloved has gone down to his garden. Verse 3 says, I'm my beloved and my beloved is mine. Akin pa rin siya. Okay. She knows where he is. In verse 2. And in verse 3, she knows what he is. Okay. That he is still faithful. That he still loves her. That he never stops loving her. That means, umalis siya, pero hindi niya ako iniwan. He did not abandon me. Ako nag sa kanya. <laughs> I rejected him. There's an important principle here. Okay? The most painful thing you can do to your spouse after getting married, after consummating your marriage, after becoming one, is to abandon your spouse. No? A mature spouse, I said mature, huh? A mature spouse, I did not say perfect, basta mature, does not go home to mama or papa, nor stumps out the door. Mature. Okay. Imperfect, kahit imperfect, basta mature. They don't go home to mama and papa, they don't stump out the door. If they do that, it reveals their immaturity. If they left because of physical abuse, or there's a threat to their lives, okay, yung tao, societal yung tao, or, or pumapatay, okay, I would understand if you leave temporarily for your protection, no? There's room for that to go, to go back home. But if they go home because of conflict, personal disagreement, it reveals the quality of their heart. It reveals the quality of their character. It reveals he or she is not committed to catch the little foxes that ruined their relationship. Hindi siya committed to harapin yung mga problema, yung mga away. Let me repeat. Other than physical abuse or threat of one's life, there is no Absolutely no biblical ground to go home to mama or papa. Is that clear? Stay and solve together all your personal conflicts and differences. Question. They're coming out of a fight. nag sila that night. They did not talk that night, okay? Ang sinabi lang niya, pagod ako. Sakit ang ulo ko, yun lang. So how did a Shulamite girl know where Solomon is? Nasa garden. Hindi sila nag-usap ah. Okay. How did she know that he did not abandon her? Sigurada, sigurada siya na tampuhan lang. Hindi niya ako iniwan. Okay. Hindi sila nag-usap. How can she say that? Okay. The most logical or only logical answer is that she learned it in their previous conversation before they had conflict. Ah, mahilig pa sa garden. If you want to be alone, you go to the garden. Ah, okay. Nag serious talk sila before they had conflict. He assured her many times of how he feels and he must have told her where he usually spend time alone. Communication for a couple is very, very important. Let me rephrase that. Good, honest, deep communication between couple is very, very important. How do you communicate? There are four major problems in marriage, okay? Always, kahit sino, kahit sinong couple, always four major problems in marriage. Number one, communication, money, sex, and in-laws. Palagi ito, apat. Major. Most couples failed in the area of communication. Either they don't know how to communicate, or they're lazy to communicate. Okay. Either they don't know or they're lazy. I, I, I shared this to you. I was brought up in a family where my parents dominate the talking. Okay. Palagi siyang galit, sumisigaw, and kami lahat tahimik. So I do not know how to communicate. Because I don't communicate with my parents, buong college, nagkatampo ako, so I stay in the room, bababa ako pagkakain na, balik sa room, okay, bababa ako kasi alis na pag-uwi sa room. I do not communicate with my parents. 
So I do not communicate. I do not know how to communicate with my wife and with my children. Okay. It took me so many years. Okay. Grace keep on telling me how to communicate to my children, how to talk to her. Okay. So I cannot do how to communicate. So, kaya kong sabihin, if communication fails, either one of you don't know how, walang model of proper communication, or you're too lazy to learn how to communicate. If you have problems in the area of money, sex, in-laws, but you know how to communicate, you can sit down and talk and plan and agree on a resolution. But if you don't know how to communicate, nothing really works. Gusto mo isolve, but you don't learn how to communicate. Walang mangyayari. Here's how you talk or communicate. First, never speak rashly. Okay? Never speak rashly. Weigh your words before you speak. Cool off before you speak. There are many ways to cool off. Yung mga iba, nag-account, one, two, three, four, five, six, di ba? Yung mga iba, di ba? <laughs> to cool off, okay? Before they talk. And when you speak, speak slowly and clearly. Maliban kung you have stroke already, like me, kaya hindi malinaw yung pagkasalta mo, okay? This means, it is not what you say, but when and how you say it. Secondly, never confront your mate publicly. I've seen couples do that at restaurants, public places, sometimes even on the streets. Remember, in the Bible, to shame or dishonor your spouse is to dishonor or shame yourself. Hindi, siya pinapahiya ako. Napahiya ka rin. Okay, now now if you're your girl, because your hus husband is your head, no? Sub -sub -bible. He's your leader. <clears throat> My wife never, never, even once shame me or dishonor me in public. Thirdly, never confront them before kids. Okay? Go in the back room and talk. Again, you can ask my children, they can testify that my wife never confront me before my children. Do you know that kids who were raised witnessing their parents fight before them are usually miserable and have trauma? If you love your children, please spare them by not confronting your spouse before your kids know. My wife never, you know, maganda. I praise God, my wife never <clears throat> shame me before anybody, okay? <clears throat> Minsan, wala lang makain, okay? <laughs> Walang pagkain. Okay, no, no. She always prepare food for me. <clears throat> but if you're the guilty one, if you're stubborn, kahit na may pagkain, takot kang kumain eh. Baka may Dora. <laughs> No, my wife never do that, okay? Mm. Fourthly, never use the kids. Meaning, don't let the kids take side. It's painful for the kids, and because kids cannot process, okay? Kung kaya man, okay? They will have trauma. They will end up feeling very guilty, thinking they're the reason why parents fight or divorce. Kasi nag take sides ako, eh. Tinan ko ng mama ko kung sino piliin mo. Okay, pinili ko siya yan. Nag-divorce sila. Fifthly, never say never. Never say always. Titiyan-tiyan. Okay. So nga ni. Di umpat. So nga ni. Guilty. Sixthly, never get historical. Or pastor, you mean hysterical? No, no. Literally, do not get historical. Okay? By historical, I mean don't dig up the past. Don't keep focusing on what is in the past. 
Do you remember you did this five years ago? Okay. I'm sure you're enjoying doing it again. Don't do that, okay? Seventhly, never raise your voice. You can say just about anything as long as you are sweet and soft-spoken. No? So was a Proverbs 16, 21. Sweetness of speech increases persuasiveness. No? Many couples came to me and said, Pastor, I read the whole book of Ephesians, 1 Corinthians. Dapat, kung naging Christian kami, okay yung marriage namin eh. Ephesians 6, Ephesians 5, di ba? Love one another, sing hymns. Bakit hindi okay kami? Sabi ko, because you, you jump to Ephesians 6, no? Ephesians 3, Ephesians 4, nandun yung speech. You should correct your speech. Correct your mindset. Kung hindi, your marriage will not work now. You have to learn how to communicate. <clears throat> No shouting. Yes, we shout from time to time that we confess. Okay. We repent. Eighthly, never call names. It is demeaning and hostile. It encourages a valley of insults back and forth. And you don't get anything resolved, no. Never call names that are demeaning. My wife... I allow them, with my permission, to call me Anion? Bob's, okay? Kasi pag Billy, hindi ko man naging yee, okay? Pag Bugs, nanini ko, okay? Bob's, uh, or Dading, or Becky. But there's a story, there's a story behind that, there's a context, okay? It's not demeaning, I allow them. To me, it's a term of endearment. Kasi I always told them, nakalimutan ko na, I can't remember, sorry. Oh, you did that? I can't remember. In, in, in Hokkien, it's called, wa buekila, buekila. Eh, bulul, wa buekila, beki, beki. So they, they called me beki. <laughs> so they call, okay, sige, kayo lang pwede, okay. And then, Daddy, dad, they call me dad, okay? They, call me pap, they call me dad. And then later on, it evolves into dading. Okay? Dading. So my story, it's not demeaning for me. But for you, if it's demeaning, don't do that, okay? Never call your wife, Matutina! Okay? Kasi matas yung boys niya. Never do that. Ninthly, never mention family. Oh, wag no isama yung pants niya. Parents, mom. It's still his parents. It's still her parents. Don't bring them into the fight. It does not accomplish anything. It just makes them mad. Okay? Once your family gets involved na, mahirap na. Okay? Tenthly, never press to win. Okay? Never, never, never press to win. What do you mean, Pastor? The goal is to express your sentiments. The the, the goal is to make them understand. The goal is to resolve personal conflicts, not to be vindicated, not to win. When you press for a win, you lose a mate. Minsan, okay lang. Lugi ka, okay. Kaya nga, you commit to catch all foxes that destroy marriage. One of them is, ayaw palagi ikaw panalo. Sometimes, okay lang, good. Lugi ako, okay lang, buya ako kina. Asawa mo yan eh. Siya nagluto, siya naglalaba, naglilinis. Lahat siya na eh. Diba? Buya ako kina. It's okay. Mahal mo siya eh. Press to resolve. Press to a resolution, not to victory. Eleven, don't condescend or demean. Okay? Some men are very soft-spoken. Mahinahan magsata magaling. But when they speak, they're very, pagagalit, they're very abrasive and just rip their spouse. No? I happen to be, sabi na iba, I happen to be the spiritual one and she's more worldly, materialistic. Pinapahiya niya, asawa niya sa harap ng tao. 
You should try his cooking. He's a good in tasting food, but not cooking. You should try his cooking. Even our dogs refuse to eat his cooking. You don't condescend on your mate or demean your mate. You speak horizontal to them. Horizontal. Some of you are going to marry wives that are shy or quiet. I made a shy type, no? Quiet type. Never force a quiet or shy mate to talk. Give them time and space to adapt and adjust. How many of you think you need a little time to adjust or adapt? Hindi ka agad nakaka-defend, adapt, okay? My wife, when you change place, panibagong place, panibagong friends na naman, tahimik siya, natakot siya, no? Give them space, okay? That's how you talk or communicate. How do you listen? You should learn how to listen kasi if you keep on talking but you're not listening, bali wala, di ba? Last week, I already given you the most important ingredient. First, you listen with your face. Okay, not with your ear lamang, tapos sa TV, basketball. Okay? Listen with your face. Look at your wife, okay? Kulang lang your wife will say, look at me while I'm talking. Secondly, and generally, okay, you don't reason with your wife. Generally, okay, uh, because there will always be exceptional case, but generally, because your goal is not to press to win, okay? Your goal is not to show him na ako yung tama, okay? Ako yung lalaki. So generally, you don't reason with your wife. You just listen. Let her talk, okay? If you want to eliminate your wife quickly, then start reasoning why she is wrong. Okay? Maghalo ang langis at tubig. <laughs> Magaaway. Thirdly, do not argue with your wife. Guys, when your mate gets hurt, you stop pressing. Okay? Para sa'yo, okay lang. But when nakita mo she's hurt, stop pressing. Stop pressing. What is frightening to a woman is to have a guy that is not perfect na nga, at the same time, not perfectible or teachable pa, no? Pag na-hurta siya, don't press. Stop na kagad. Unless you want to prove to her na lamang na lamang ka, you want revenge. You continue, but it will not solve anything. In my case, I never argue with Grace when it comes to road and direction. Never argue. I learned that very, very early. Okay? Kasi I get lost palagi. If there's a conflict between ways and grace, I learn to trust and follow only grace. I never argue with her when it comes to dates, time, important facts. Yaga boy ki. After the stroke, okay? Kalimutan ko kagad. Fourthly, don't interrupt when she's talking. Interrupting your spouse will drive her nuts. Okay? You wouldn't like her when she's angry and mad. Okay. Sabi sa Proverbs 18, 13, He who answers a matter before he hears okay, is both shameful and foolish. Actually, kahit sino talaga magagalit, kahit lalaki, hindi pa tapos eh. nag ka, nag ka na. Let me finish everything. Let me give you the context. No, It just shows that you are not teachable. You might think that stomping out the door temporarily stops further conflict. Okay? But that's a wrong, destructive because it will backfire. Stomping out the door is not a minor problem, it is a cancer. Don't you ever do that, okay? Stay right there, solve together your personal conflict, and communicate and listen. Sixthly, don't vent your spleen outside. Don't go to your friends and talk about how worthless your mate. I am balulayan, okay? Boy punching. Don't go to your barcades and talk about your sorry wife. If you must vent it out, approach your pastor or your elder whom you can trust and who can counsel you biblically. Seventhly, no rude 
body language, okay? That I always do this. Siguro na sana eh. Unconsciously, kahit sino, kahit bata, kausap ko, kahit matanda. Okay? I'm listening. Pero tak... Kasi naman madali ako palagi eh. Saging time. Then my wife, my wife keeps correcting me. Baba mo yan, baba mo yan. Yes, darling. Unconscious, no? Sit down and listen. When you follow these biblical principles on how to communicate, how to listen, something wonderful happens. Okay? Let me show you through Solomon and Shulamite girl what happens. When God opens her eyes, na realize niya, oy, mali ako. Hindi pwede. Okay? Through the watchmen, through the friends asking questions, na realize niya, mali siya, okay? Something happened. Verses 4 and 5. You are as beautiful as, hindi Tarzan, ha? as Tirza. Okay? Tarzan, Pilipinas. Doon, military niyan, Tirza. <laughs> you are as well. You are as beautiful as Tirza, my darling, as lovely as Jerusalem, as majestic as troops with banners. Turn your eyes from me, they overwhelm me. Okay. Solomon is saying, I respect you, and you are as lovely as I ever remember. You are so beautiful, I can't even talk to you, Nahiyak, okay? Do you know what Solomon is doing here? Hindi siya nag... Sip, sip. He has a purpose for saying this, okay? He's not just encouraging her or, or saying nice things about her, okay? Solomon, Solomon is saying here, what he's doing is, it's called forgiveness, no? It's called forgiveness. Hindi mo kinakausap, okay? When I open my mouth, it's all good things, okay? When I do something, I put myrrh. Hindi ako galit, okay? When you open my mouth, you say sorry and you open your mouth. It's good words to you. Buti na alam mo. Buti na kita mo. Buti na realize mo. Hindi. Oh, darling, I love you. Kahit anong gawin mo, alam ko, hindi mo sadya. Okay. All good words. It's called forgiveness. When others hurt you, step number six, what you should do is forgive and forget. No? King Solomon is so magnanimous, so forgiving. If you look at the end of verses five and seven, Yung end, okay? Solomon used the same words spoken during their honeymoon night. Okay? Pareho yung words you will recall. Sabi, your hair is like a flock of goats descending from Gilead. Your teeth is like a flock of sheep coming up from washing. It has its twin, not one of them is missing, okay? Your temples behind your veil are like the halves of... Pareho yung pareho, di ba? Yung honeymoon night, when he removes the veil, sabi niya, Oh, rose six ka pala. Uy, ang pantay ng, ng ngipin mo. Walang bungi. Okay? Exactly the same words ginamit niya. If you're the Shulamite woman, okay, nagkasala ka, you barred him from entering, and then you look for, nakita mo siya, and then all, ang sinabi ng lahat is good words, kind words. You will be excited and overjoyed. Lalo na kung yung words niyon, sinabi niya sa honeymoon night, no? Because that is his way of saying, this conflict, my love, had not diminished or lessened one bit my affection, my respect for you. I love you like I always love you, no? Verses 8 and 9, 60 queens there may be, 80 concubines and virgins be a number, but my dove, my love, my perfect one is unique. Ibig sabihin, you are the only girl in the world to me. That's why sinabi natin, okay, well, ang dami niyang asawa because of the pact and treaties with the other countries. Maraming concubines because of the, given by the wives kasi hindi, hindi makaanak, okay. But he has only one true love, no? Itong Shulamite girl. Tunay niyang minahal. Tunay niyang Pinursu, okay, and he offered to 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 marry her. No? marry her. He says, "You're the only girl in the world to me." Again, what is the principle here? Solomon is assuring her again and again 
that he has truly forgiven her and completely forgiven her now. Verses 11 and 12. Solomon did something very, very special. 11, 12, no. You should try to see it. She is speaking. I went down to the grove of nut trees to look at the new grove in the valley to see if the vine has budded, pomegranates were in bloom, blah, blah, blah. Next. Before I realized it, my desire, that's King Solomon, ano ginawa niya? He set me among the royal chariots of my people. Among the noble men, okay, he set me to sit there now. In the Old Testament, in Hebrew culture, to set someone among the royal chariots with you was the highest act of reconciliation. So in a way, hindi galit si Solomon, but he's not blind. He's also telling her, yes, you hurt me. Okay, I've forgiven you. Now we're reconciliating. Okay. In a way, he's teaching her, next time don't do that. Okay, I forgive you. Next time, don't do that. In fact, I set you before the road. Charles, no. I'm reconciling with you. Solomon is, uh, in the Old Testament, Ahab, king of Israel, was condemned by God, Bucket, because King Ahab set the king of Syrian army, their enemies, in the chariot with him. Hindi pwede. You're honoring your enemy. So, Dios, okay. So, Solomon here is publicly declaring, I not only forgiven you, I can't even remember what you have done like it never occurred. No. So, hindi siya magiging historical. A few more words and I will end, okay? Some of you might think, Pastor, the more I listen to this series, the more I think you are degrading male leadership and making us men look weak and CC, no? Parang, oto-oto kami, parang, Budding? Parang ginagawa mo kami mga bakla, walang, walang say, okay? No. On the contrary, I'm dignifying male leadership and manhood, no? I'm intentionally giving you a clear picture of what a biblical, strong, sacrificial, loving, selfish husband who would treat his wife like Christ treats his church. This is God's definition of a Song of Solomon men. Hindi worldly, machismo, controlling, insensitive, abrasive, selfish husband who would lord it all over his wife. No. Have you ever seen my wife control me? Hindi, di ba? She never abused me. Hindi ako bakla. Oh. In my opinion, people today have a wrong notion of what a weaker vessel is, no? And what a servant leadership. Servant leadership, mag serve ka. Okay? I'm simply recovering the biblical meaning and intention of those two words. Song of Solomon develops a true gentleman. And a true gentleman is the initiator. Say nagi initiate. When it comes to attraction, dating, courtship, marriage, even in conflict. She like initiate, do not awaken love until the soul desires. She like initiates, mag forgive. Initiates, mag reconcile. Whenever a true gentleman faces conflicts, he does not retaliate. His focus standard is God. He does not take matters in his own hand. He has self-control. He communicates. Keep on communicating until forgiven and forgets everything. Why is that? Because he believes that in the over plan, overall plan and providence of God, personal conflicts, if handled properly and biblically, can grow our relationship, can grow a relationship. No? Let me show you that, where I get that. Verse 13, okay? Come back, come back, O Shulamite. Stop that. Did you know that Shulamite is not her name? 
What's her name? Hindi ko alam. Basta Shulamite is not her name. It's her nickname. Nickname. Shulamite is the female diminutive term for Solomon. Shulam. Shulamite. Shulam. Okay. If your name is Archie, then your girlfriend is Archkins. If my name is Billy, then you can nickname Grace Billykins. That's really my nickname, no? People call me Billy Kins. Okay. It means, Archie Kins means you belong to Archie. Billy Kins, you belong to Billy. David Kins, you belong to David. Okay. Shulamite means she belonged to King Solomon. Okay. Question, what has conflict and forgiveness done to them? It has brought them closer. It has brought them closer. How does chapter 6 end? Okay. Verse 13, O Shulamite, come back, come back, that we may gaze on you. Why should you gaze on the Shulamite as at the end, as, as at the dance of two companies? No. That chapter ends with a bang, okay? Bang, I mean the couple is partying, the couple is dancing. Nagaaway, sa pinakalas, they're dancing, they're enjoying, reconciling, celebrating. Okay? One company is Solomon, the other company is Shulamite. Okay? Conflict has brought intimacy, it has brought joy to them. No? I personally experience this principle. I personally experience where sin increases, grace abounds. I love my wife so much because she has forgiven me so incredibly. And I have committed to be a Song of Solomon man as long as we both shall live. No? UCC Church, do you now understand how to face conflict? Don't react. Respond using God's standard, okay? Respond by following God's standard. Respond to God. Let God change your mate. Wag mong pilitin, okay? Talk, forgive, and forget. You can't do better than this 3,000-year-old document. No? Let me conclude with what will help you forgive. Pastor, ang hirap eh. Ang sakit ang ginawa niya. Okay? Ang sakit. Nang babae siya. Let me conclude with what will help you forgive no matter how painful. Personally, what helps me forgive is the fact of how I have been forgiven. We were raised Buddhist, but in the province of God, I came to study at Hope Christian High School. There I learned that I was sinful, I was lost, I was condemned, I was going to hell. It was also there that I found out that Jesus Christ died upon the cross at Calvary. If he did die because, I mean, he did not die because of his sin, because he was sinless, okay? He's a sinless, holy one of God. All the punishment that my sin deserved was placed on him because he died in my place. And only through faith in him, in his shed blood, could wash me clean of all my guilt, okay? I learned that when I was in high school. I could have security, I could have salvation and forgiveness. Jesus could take his righteousness and give it to me as a free gift. In other words, Jesus was treated as if he committed all my sins. He suffered as if he committed all my sins and died. So that I could be treated as if I had lived his perfect life and go to heaven. So the Bible, no one seeks God. So if I reject him, I was wishing if I reject him, what can I offer God to gain entrance into heaven? I was raised a Buddhist. Sana eh. Then I heard about Christ. Only in Christianity do I find explanation of bakit ako ganyan? Sinful pala ako. Where am I going? Sabi sa Bible, go to hell unless I have a solution. So what can I offer God? to go to heaven if I reject Christ, no? 
Sabi sa Bible, No one seeks God, none is righteous. Jesus said, All our good deeds are like filthy rags before God. Before you try to get straight with your mate, okay, right? Before you try to get straight with your mate, spouse, why don't you first get straight with your maker? No. When you were forgiven, then you know how to forgive him. When you realize you've seen so much and forgiven so much, then you will know how to forgive other people. Be reconciled with God first, because a good marriage is the union of two forgivers who had been forgiven by God. A large part of our problem today, including our marriage problems, has been that we have not repented. We're stubborn. We are not reconciled with God, and therefore our human relationships simply don't work. If in the back of your mind, in the corner of your heart, you're feeling a tug, okay, don't ignore that tug. No. Humble yourself. Acknowledge that you are not perfect. You need saving. Trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's the message of the cross. Okay. I'm in pain today. Yeah, I can't speak clearly, okay? But please understand the message of the cross is a message of transformation. He can transform your life, your marriage, your family, and your relationships. That's the art of fighting based on Song of Solomon. Okay? Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, in the midst of our struggles, search us, O God, and know our hearts. We do not want to be blind, leading the blinds. Try us and know our anxious thoughts and see if there is any wicked way in us. For those who hurt us, enable us to forgive and forget without hatred and bitterness. Enable us to work together with mutual forbearance and respect and lead us into the way of everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.